I'm back in the studio and have I got a great tool. And for a tool guy, now is a great time to be alive. I was a Kickstarter backer for the M3D printer. And I think these guys have really broken the, the price barrier, if nothing else. This is going to enable all of us who are model builders to be able to put a 3D printer on our desktop, on our model bench, wherever you want to put it, and be able to add all kinds of detail parts to your models. Nice, it's about $350 now. It was a $300 as a, as a Kickstarter project. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, builds about a five by five by five envelope or size of build area. Great size to work with. It's almost as big as the Athenia that H that's owned by Kent Hurley, uh, my real good friend here in Kansas City, who's got a super blog. You can check him out with the things he's been doing because he's a pioneer in doing this kind of 3D modeling, especially for model railroads. At any rate, I'm getting started with mine now. Kent's kind of my mentor uh, in getting some of these things done. One of the first things we did, this machine arrived when we were at Springfield, the Amherst show this last year. And one of the first things we did was take Kent's program for barrels. He drew this in SketchUp and we printed it. And you can kind of tell here, this set of barrels, I think, really came out looking absolutely marvelous. Uh, we've got both the wooden barrel as well as the 55 gallon drums here. Um, one thing that I did, the first program that I ever tried in SketchUp, and I probably shouldn't have tried something so complicated, but I did a um, stake pocket for G scale. And we'll pop this off if I can here. It may not come off, it's been on there so long. And yeah, we'll leave it. I'll try and show you here. Um, it does have the holes here on the side for mounting. It has the through pocket for the stake to go into it. And it has the three metal bands. It really did a great job of printing uh, the stake pocket. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make some bottoms, bottom detail for the uh, reefers that I'm building. Some of you may not be aware of it, but Kansas City and Chicago were in deep competition back turn of the century for the meat market, meat processing market, both in cattle and, um, and hogs. And so what I've done is I've started to custom build some cars here. I'm going to the software program that we covered some time ago in another episode uh, of the back shop and be sure and check that out on Trainmasters TV. Anyway, this was made with the computer and I'm gonna make several reefers like this and I needed some bottom detail to put on the cars. And I just wanted enough so that when you look through it, see if I can get it down here in the white, you can see that I've got an air um, cylinder hanging down there. I've got a piston hanging down there. I've got my triple valve. It just shows a little more detail underneath the car than what I'd have if it wasn't there. And it was really convenient because all I had to do was, whoop, crash. All I had to do was build it um, in the model form in SketchUp, which I did here, and then print them out. And you can see that even that at this size, this printer is more than big enough to print this out. My next thing was the project that I had for that SW9 diesel, and I needed an interior for it. I was making the cab uh, on the Cricut machine, and this was the original S-scale interior as it came. I needed it in ON30, or at least O-scale, so that's what I did. I drew it out in O-scale, and here you can see it's easier to see on this one because I've painted it um, and you can see the details are all just a little bit bigger but a pretty easy drawing this is just boxes and and um, cylinders pulled out on the SketchUp program now that is one thing if you're going to go into 3D you're going to have to go into some kind of a 3D CAD program and that means either SketchUp uh, on my Mac I'm on the PC here but on the Mac I use um, TurboCAD, um, and both of them work very well. The SketchUp is a free program, and actually I find it a lot easier to use for making a lot of these parts. So I would look into that. We'll talk a little bit of background in case you're new to it. This is a raft. It's the part that you see on the bottom of most of these parts, like the barrels and my um, stake pocket. And that raft is laid down first. That's what adheres it to the bed of the printer and then they can build the part then on that raft this one was done by kent and all of us make mistakes i'll show you mine here in a minute i'm going to show you kent's here first 
if you look at it very closely, you may be able to see that it has shifted and the sides are not perfectly straight, uh, square up and down. And that's because the printer head caught the print in mid layer. It does this thing in layers. It caught that and pulled it a little bit and pulled it off of its reference points. And then it built the rest of it up from that. So you got kind of a, a curve on that. I had the same problem last night in trying to get ready for you to come in uh, and check me out here today. And this one did not print very well. But this print problem was not due to the printer head hitting the piece. It was due to orientation. And that's the first thing that Kent taught me was you have to be very careful about how you orient the part on the build platform. This stage in here is the build platform. It makes a big difference on whether or not I orient it up like this or whether I make it laying down like this. This one came out, whoops, sorry for dropping it on you. This one came out far better than the one that's standing up. I really don't have that much detail on the sides of the one that was standing up, but this one shows all of the attachments here on the side, the U-bolts, everything. It's all in place on this one. So laying it down made a big difference. And that's what I did. I printed this one. It didn't come out very well. So I took it and I turned it. And we'll show you how to do that on the computer here in just a second. The only other thing I did that I want to kind of point out, most of these machines perform a little bit better if they have an external feed. That means the feed for the filament. This is the plastic that's going to be melted and deposited to make my parts. So I made a reel holder here. And this turns very easy, very free, uh, allows the filament to come out and feed into my printer head. So let's go over here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my M3D icon over here and open up the beta version of my M3D. Here we go. These are all the models that I have imported in the past. And here's my stake pocket. So if I click on that, it's going to put it right here on my virtual build platform on my stage. And if I want to work on that, then all I have to do is come over here and click on that. Really cool that we're inside this thing and looking at it. And now I can do anything with that piece that I want. If it's laying down and I wanted to stand it up to try a different print, I just touch it and wow, it turns it right up. And the same token, I can put it back down. I can roll it. I can spin it, whatever I want to do to it. Now, the other thing I can do is I go to my settings because it gives me a lot of control here. It allows me to manage my filament. Now, from this feeder, I'm using a PLA, which is a corn-based type plastic, but you could also use uh, an ABS styrene type as well. If you're going to use the styrene, and maybe with the PLA, depending on what your preference is, you may want to go and buy a glue stick like this. This is scotch, but anybody will do. And you rub a little bit of that onto the base. It just helps that raft, that base piece, stick and not move around so that you get a good print. Um, the other thing to remember is uh, I was showing a bunch of this manipulation here where we can move it around. But you also need to remember that it doesn't make any difference whether you draw in AutoCAD or SketchUp or TurboCAD or whatever. When you go to finish that drawing and you've got that part ready to go and you're going to export it to bring it into this machine, first of all, it must be an STL file. And secondly, it's 100% sure that you ought to do it with millimeters. If you've drawn it as I do in English, feet and inches, change it as you export it to millimeters because this machine reads in millimeters. So it's much easier to manipulate later on if it's already in millimeters. When I drew it the first time in English, this uh, stake pocket came in and it was a dot. You couldn't even hardly see it without greatly magnifying that. And then I had to blow it up to like 2000% to even get it close to what it is. Asked Kent, and of course he came back and said, well, you dummy, you got to do it in millimeters. Actually, he didn't say that, but do it, do it in millimeters. You'll be much, much better off. It'll make it much easier to manipulate these things once you get them in. So everything's done. Let's go to print. And that's just a simple process. We just hit the print button.
So it's been 12 minutes. Let's see what we've got. We're going to pop that sucker out of there. And there he is. And he's actually looking pretty good. That's a pretty good print out of our um, stake pocket. Now, that took about 12 minutes. The same interior here that I showed you earlier took almost two hours. So proofing these things sometimes takes quite a little bit of time. And not all of them turn out absolutely perfect. The head hit this one and moved my raft a little bit. Um, you just kind of have to learn to live with this. It's not always a perfect science. Uh, some of these are a little bit better than others. I have open top surfaces on some of these where they didn't quite print 100%. And I could actually go back into my drawings and thicken those up. And you can do the same thing. Professional model makers, lots of times when they would take these kinds of parts, would take crazy glue, believe it or not, a little medium viscosity. And that's what I did here. I smeared that onto this, rubbed it with a little bit of um, the same bags like you get at the grocery store or Walmart, those plastic bags. They don't stick to crazy glue. Wiped it on here and smoothed some of these surfaces out and then came back and painted them. And it just makes for a much smoother surface. Because one thing you do get with 3D printing, and I don't know if I can get the light to to shine for you correctly here or not, but it has layering to it. Um, and it's only a few thousandths of an inch per layer, but you can actually see the layers in here. Now you can, to a certain extent, scrape those with an X-Acto or file them um, or use the crazy glue. Also, Sherwin-Williams makes a paint called Surefill. It's S-U-R -S hyphen F-I-L. It's a very thick paint, the opposite of what we normally would use in our models. But it actually will fill these pores in about two or three coats. Uh, you want to sand in between. But Surefill wor works great for filling some of these things up. So it's not an exact perfect science uh, for any of the 3D printers. But this is certainly an excellent way to do an entrance into the 3D printing market. Uh, it's from M3D. Costs about $350 nowadays. Can't say enough good things about what they've done for getting the price of these printers down, actually well below the $1,000 mark, which is where they all used to be. So this is opening up an entire new door for you to pass through.